Hey folks, today we're going to be talking about NX Console. I've got VS Code opened up now and we can see our NX Console plugin is here in the side panel. When I open it up, we can see it opens up several panes here that I could look at. This one here shows us all of the targets that we have inside of our project. Now there are some generic tasks in here like building, linting, and serving, but there's also some targets inside of this workspace that are unique to the workspace, like build image. You normally wouldn't see that, but because this workspace is building a Docker image, we do have a task named build image. So how does our NX console plugin know that we have a task called build image? Well, if we look at all the project JSON files inside of our application and we look at the to do API, this is actually where the build image target lives. If we scroll down, there it is. Now, again, the name of this task is just an arbitrary string. For example, we could make this build Docker image instead and hit a save there. And if we go back to our NX console plugin, we can see that the task has updated itself in here as well. So I'm going to take that interaction we just saw of me changing the project JSON, and I'm going to share it with you in light of this diagram we see here. We can see our NX daemon is here running in the background, watching for changes to our file system. Remember when I hit save and change the string inside of this project.json file, the NX daemon was able to observe that change and recalculate our project graph and store it in memory. Now that project graph exists in memory, so our NX CLI can easily retrieve that information when it needs to run a command. And that same data source is being used to hydrate the UI on our NX console, which is why we're able to see the UI update automatically as soon as we hit save inside of our project.json file. So why does this all matter when we talk about NX console going poly IDE? Well, it matters because if we look at our diagram here, we can see that if we want to implement a NX console plugin for VS code, we'll need to write JavaScript code in order to get our information from our project draft versus if we want to create an IntelliJ plugin, we'll need to write Kotlin code in order to get that same information. Now, at this point, we're essentially maintaining two different applications, and that's gonna cause our velocity to go down. If we look at what NX console was able to do before we brought IntelliJ into the picture, it was pretty much a single path for implementing a feature. We saw something we wanted to add, we wrote JavaScript code to add it to the VS Code plugin. But now if we want to maintain feature parity with an IntelliJ IDE or any other IDEs coming in the future, any of that kind of work is going to need to be mirrored in the Kotlin side of things as well. And that's not great. But thankfully, there is a pretty nice solution for this. If we take a look at our graph now, we can see that what we did in this past iteration was take a lot of the code that was running specifically inside of our VS Code plugin and break that out into an LSP or a language server protocol. And we actually call this the NX language server or NXLS for short. Now the language server protocol is a common protocol that both VS Code and IntelliJ and also NeoVim happen to implement so that we can implement some shortcuts like auto completion and stuff like that. And we'll take a look at that in a little bit. But in addition to this, we can also piggyback the project graph information into that language server process. And this way, a lot of that code that we'd have to duplicate across the two different applications can now be consolidated inside of the language server process. And the result is that for the most part, the IntelliJ and the VS Code plugin, they still have to have their own applications and they still have to be written in JavaScript and Kotlin. But for the most part, we can limit this to the presentation layer and the application logic layer as opposed to the entire core of the application. Now, because this is a protocol, and now that's meant to encourage cross compatibility across IDEs, this means that if you wanted to use NeoVim and just hook it right into the LSP, the NX language server, you should be able to do so and get some of the benefit out of it. It won't be everything that NX console is cooked up to be just yet, but you should be able to get some autocomplete in your project.json files and in your nx.json file as well. So that's a high level overview of what happened with NX console this last iteration. But because we've released our IntelliJ plugin now, let's actually get our hands into IntelliJ and see it in action. So to do this, I'm gonna open up IntelliJ, which I have over here, and I don't have the plugin installed just yet. So I'm going to go to settings and plugins, and inside of the marketplace here, I'll look for NX console. 
as we can see, there are several plugins in here, uh, some of them with a whole bunch of downloads already. Our plugin is actually this one with only 200 because it was just released. And we wanted to give some special appreciation to Isam Guisoma and Edward Tikachev, who implemented and were supporting these previous plugins. And in particular to Isam for all the hard work he's put in to bringing all the features that he implemented into his plugin, He's been actively working to get all of those features into our official NX console plugin that we see at the bottom here. So huge shout out to Sam and also to Edward. Thanks so much for shouldering that load for a long time. But anyways, let's go ahead and install that plugin now. And once it's been installed, we'll need to restart the IDE. Now once IntelliJ has been restarted, let's pull up the nx.json file. And I'll take a look at some of those LSP features we were talking about earlier. I'm gonna make the text a bit bigger here, but let's focus on line 15 here, where we're looking at the target defaults for our build target. The depends on array here should actually be limited to targets that actually exist inside of our workspace. And this is part of what we built into the LSP. So if we see here, if I start typing a string and press the shortcut to trigger autocomplete, we can see that IntelliJ is actually presenting us through the plugin with a list of all of the targets that are available inside of our project. Notice this is that build Docker image target that we had implemented earlier. Now it's got the caret in front of it because it's for all of the dependencies that have a build Docker image. But if we scroll down, there's that build Docker image as well. We'll just say for now that the build depends on the Docker image being built. Now the same kind of logic applies to the capsule operations here inside of our task runner options. If we do the same process here, we'd see that we've got a list of all of the task names that exist inside of our workspace that don't already exist inside of this array. So that's that LSP in action, showing us that we're getting all of the benefits of the NX daemon populating our workspace configuration into memory. So this way the information is provided to our NXLS or our language server protocol. And that information is provided into the IntelliJ plugin proper so that we can implement other features and catch up quickly to all of the VS Code features that we've implemented. So to see some of that fast iteration in action, we've actually launched the IntelliJ plugin with the ability to run NX Generate via a UI. So to see this, I'm going to hit Command Shift A, which is the shortcut to open up the command palette. I'm going to start typing NX Generate. As we can see, as I type that out, I get this option to open up the Generate UI. Why? If I click that, it will open up a list of all of the generators I have available in my project. And if I start typing application, let's say I want to add a new React application to my project, I can click there. A new window here is going to open with all of the parameters that are built into our React application generator. We can see if we click here, show more. Now, this form hopefully looks very familiar to those of you that are familiar with our VS Code plugin. And that's because if we open up the NX console and click generate and start typing in application, application and go to that same Narwhal React application, that opens up a pane inside of VS Code, which actually has the same exact web view inside of VS Code as we have here inside of IntelliJ. So we don't see it in the graph here, but in addition to the LSP, there's also this web view that uses the same exact code in both IntelliJ and in VS Code. And this means that if any feature is added to our NX Generate UI, that our VS Code and IntelliJ projects are instantly both going to receive those updates. So that's really cool. And like I said, we're looking to rapidly iterate on catching up IntelliJ to all of the features we've added to our VS Code plugin. And we'll see some more of these released next week. So be sure to hit like and subscribe to get notified about when those features go out. We'll do another video to show all of the cool features inside of IntelliJ to catch it up to VS Code. And we'll be focused on adding even more features into the IntelliJ plugin to get it all caught up to VS Code in the upcoming cycles. And especially let us know if you're a NeoVim user and you can see yourself getting some value out of using the NXLS, so the LSP inside of your own workspaces. We actually have several engineers who use NeoVim internally and are using the LSP inside of their own workflows inside of NeoVim. And let us know what other features you'd like to see inside of NX Console or NX in general. But we'll get back to work. We'll see you next week with those new features inside of IntelliJ. And until then, happy coding.